Greetings, my name is Kevin Matthews and I am the tax professor and I want to welcome you back to class. Remember, class is still in session because the learning never stops. And part of the reason why I'm doing this video, okay, um, here's the thing. So I've, I've had, I, I, we actually did a, a video on W4 earlier and that's been up in the website and I've had some people who've kind of looked at it and uh, one of the feedbacks that I get, by the way, if you're giving me feedback on my video, I love you to death. Uh, I, I actually have a couple clients out there who, who used to shoot professionally. <laughs> and so they've kind of come back to me and said, hey, these are some things that you need to do. I am more than happy to accept feedback. Uh, I, you know, my goal is to, you know, I don't do this project in order to, you know, just to glorify myself. I do it because um, something that I've noticed is that um, when a client calls me and asks me something on the phone, Sometimes, you know, we explain things, but maybe we don't explain everything that needs to be explained. And so um, in order to do that and in order to do it most properly, sometimes having something that talks about the entirety of something and then you can go in, you can watch the video and you can take a look and say, this part applies to me, this part doesn't. So I, I, like I said, I shot the W4 video earlier. I kind of, uh, you know, some people took a look at it and said, yeah, these are the things that I like about it. These were... Uh, some things that were missing. And one of the biggest parts of feedback that came back was that it wasn't very tutorial. And initially when I shot the video, just a little background on it, it's part of our Rapid Shots collection. Rapid Shots is kind of a holy smoke, something big has just happened in the industry. I need to get it out to people immediately. Here's the video, now go watch it. And that way you guys have some information that's, that's a little bit more timely. In the off season, we, we usually tend to t choose topics that we kind of go, these are kind of timeless topics. These are things that people are constantly dealing with. These are the ways that they need to deal with it. And, um, and these are some of the things that, that need to take place in order to uh, make people more successful. And so we take broader topics. We tend to go a little bit deeper into them. We take the videos and they go a little bit longer. And, uh, and as a result of which, we're able to, uh, to, to really hit some stuff. So when we're, take, when we're taking a look at the W-4, uh, in the original video, and I'll go ahead and I'll put that link. Um, uh, if I haven't done so already, I'll put it up on the corner. Um, what, what we did with the other video was just kind of let you know what happened. Okay. As you guys probably remember, uh, they passed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act back in 2017. What they did is they gave the IRS about 45 days about or about five weeks to put together a new withholding regime which is a process that normally would have taken about six to seven months. And, uh, you know, and like I said in the other video, you know, there, there's sometimes where I don't give the IRS a lot of, you know, I give them a lot of grief, but this is one place where I really have to say they did the best they could with what they had. And, and, and quite frankly, no fault to the IRS. It came up short because what ended up happening was they accidentally made the withholdings too small and as a result of which, there were a lot of people, if you ended up, if you're normally used to getting refunds, you ended up owing money. If you're used to owing money, you ended up owing a lot of money. And if you're used to owing a lot of money, you even owed more money. Because what would happen is, is that you got more of your paycheck given to you during that tax year. Again, I'm not trying to make any political you know, dialogue discussions, whether this was right, wrong, or indifferent. But we did have some clients that kind of came back and said, we don't want that to be this way. How can we set our W-4 so that we can do it? And the problem that we had with the W-4, the old W-4 was based on a payroll withholding system that was set up all the way back in the 1940s, which included ex exemptions. As part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, exemptions are gone. They don't exist anymore. So to make a withholding system based on something that doesn't exist anymore doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so it was very important for um, uh, for things to be done correctly, so that uh, you want to you want to make sure that the withholding system is based on current tax law, not on what tax law used to be. Now we'll put out a warning there in 2025. All the provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, well, not all of them, but most of them, will phase back in. So exemptions are coming back in 2025, absent any action from the IRS, or I'm sorry, from Congress. Um, between you, me, if I want, and I don't usually do a whole lot of, um, of, of guessing what Congress is going to do. It's a, it's kind of a dangerous game to get in. Um, my personal opinion, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to have people who are going to be put in power that want the exemptions to come back. They're going to let it happen. 
The other option is that there's people who, who see that these exemptions being gone have, has benefited in some way, shape, or form the, the, the country, and they're going to make them want to go away. Now, if you take a look at it, um, they're gone, but, the, but some of the tax provisions that exist still exist. And if you want to take a look at, we actually did a video on child tax credits, and I'll go ahead and I'll put the link up to that video right here and as to how the child tax credit affects things right now. But if you take a look at it from an effect, um, the fact that you had kids that were now, uh, you were losing exemptions on the kids, the tax credits that they've actually put into effect almost negate any potential harm that would happen for the kids. The problem where we're running into is that when they double the exemption, I mean, double the standard deduction, that was sort of the benefit that got put into that from the exemptions for the taxpayer and spouse themselves. And there is no tax credit for the taxpayer and spouse. And, um, and so if, if you're one of those who is filing on standard deductions all the time, you didn't see a problem. Um, but if you, if you're one of those who itemized, you lost roughly about $8,000 of, of, of deductions or, or exemptions, uh, that would have reduced your taxable income, which then would have reduced your tax. That unfortunately is gone. Um, and, and like I said, until 2025, when they actually bring exemptions back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and this, this video, as opposed to the other video is going to be a little bit more tutorial, a little, you know, and I say more tutorial. The other one was kind of tutorial. There were some things where I said, this is where you need to do this, this is where you need to do that. We're going to go deep dive into what needs to happen in terms of, uh, of a W-4. Now, one thing that I have to do is a warning here. If you have a pension, uh, this system's probably not going to work very well for you. So if, if, if you have a pension and you're going to, and, and, and in addition to all of this other income, um, you're, you're going to want to talk to us directly because, and when I say pension, I'm talking about people who have, um, you know, they're, they're retired. So that, you know, retired military is a very common one because what will happen with a lot of retired military people is y'all will leave the military and then you go off and you do your second career. Well, you're still getting that retirement pension that takes place. And so the withholding that's going to be done through that is actually not done on a W-4. It's done on what's called a W-4P. And, and, and we re it's really difficult for us to be able to set your withholdings if you have a sizable pension. Now, if you're one of those people and you have a, retirement, uh, ret a military retirement pension and it's really, really small, you could probably get away with doing the W-4. But um, you really want to talk to us before you finalize that and send it off. Okay, so here we have the W-4, and I'm, I've got a copy of it that I'm going to be following with you guys on, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll share with you uh, the, the W-4 as it's uh, pulled from the IRS website. All right, so this is the W-4. I, I know I've got the video of, of me up there, but behind that is actually a 2020. Um, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll show that for a second. You'll notice that they had a 2020 in there. So you, when you download the W-4, you want to make sure you get the, the, the 2020 version of the W-4. You don't want to do a previous version like 2018 or back because that, that's not going to happen. So if you take a look at it, the first uh, area that you have here, it's pretty much basic stuff. So they're going to ask for name, you know, first name, last name, address, social security number, and then are you filing uh, married filing joint or are you filing um, single married filing separately or head of household? Here you want to put down, and I know we've said this in the past with other W-4s, you don't necessarily put down your actual filing status. In this case, you want to. You want to make sure that you're putting down that you are married filing joint and that you actually put it in, in there. So if, if you're married filing joint, make sure you check the married filing joint box. If you're single or, or you're going to do married filing separately because maybe you're going through separation or maybe you're separated from somebody, um, you want to do the married or fi married filing separate. And then if you're head of household, you want to make sure that you do the head of household. So make sure you follow it correctly. If you take a look there at step two, so for step two, they're going to talk about the fact that, you know, you want to complete in a step, you know, they say uh, complete the step if you hold more than one job at a time, or if you are married filing joint and your spouse also works. One of the problems that we had with the previous W-4, it did not take into account um, two jobs, uh, you know, two house, two household incomes very well. And so what ends up happening is, you, you know, we would actually, what we would end up doing is we would have you and your spouse fill out a W-4 and kind of trick the system so that we could actually have it do it correctly. And, and so that, well, fortunately, with the new 2020 W-4, 
they've gone ahead and they've gotten rid of all of that. And so that's, that's actually been very helpful, but they're just going to say, you know, in, in the portion that they say down below, do one of the own, do only one of the following. Okay. So the, and they've given you three choices that are here. You can either use the estimator, which is going to be located at www.irs.gov slash W4 app. And that and they're saying that's the most accurate. I would, I would kind of agree with that um, because what's going to happen is it's going to take your actual circumstance that you have and it's, and it's going to actually put it in. Now, what it's not going to do is it's not going to take into account changing circumstances. So if you have a kid that is going from the age of 16 to 17 where they're going to fall out of the child tax credit, this may not necessarily capture that correctly. And so you want to make sure that you're doing things on the up and up to make sure that you've got that. And here's a W4 website that they have. Um, basically what you would do is, is you click on that little blue button down below and uh, it'll take you through some serious steps, a series of steps where it'll ask you a lot of these questions. Are you single, married, had a household, blah, blah, blah. Then it asks you for a list of your income. And then, you know, it'll basically say, this is what you need to do in these boxes. By and large, this is going to be a pretty accurate way of doing it. But again, um, all computer systems are kind of garbage in, garbage out. You want to make sure that you're doing the right ones and get that uh, set up correctly so that that gets done. Um, the the other option that you have is that you can use the married file, you know, the married jobs worksheet on page three. This is the multiple jobs worksheet that they have down here. And basically what they're going to do is they give you a couple options here. Number one, they're going to say, you know, first of all, read the note. It says if you have more than one job and annual wages of more than $120,000 or there are three more than three jobs, see publication 505 for tables. If you run into this circumstance, guys, reach out to us. Okay, we'll help you get past this step. This is, this is where it gets very wonky. Um, you know, trying to figure this stuff out on your own, it's going to be a little bit helpful. And if you're not one of my clients, First of all, why not? And then, uh, and then, second of all, if you're not, you know, if you're not one of my clients, and 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 it's and we're not, um, you want to make sure that you're working with your tax professional in order to make sure that you get this one done. Because if you if you screw up this step, it's going to make things really really bad for you. Okay, so you want to make sure again. And if you have any questions about this, you should be reaching out to myself if um, if you're one of my clients. If you're not one of my clients, reach out to your tax professional and say. I don't understand how this aspect of this is working. Can you help me with it? It's much better to go to them with that kind of a question. Sometimes if it's, if it's really fast, they may not even get charged for it. Um, but if it's one of those things, they have to redo your entire thing. Sometimes it's better to just pay for it and have peace of mind than it is to actually just deal with, um, with some of the other aspects of that. Okay, so if they say you have two jobs or you're married filing joint and you and your spouse each have, have one job, Find the amount on the appropriate table on page four, which I've gone ahead and I've put up here for you, for you all. And then what you're going to want to do is that you're going to say, use the higher paying job row and the lower paying job. So let's say, for example, one spouse makes $130,000 a year and the other spouse makes $80,000 a year. Again, that's $130,000 a year versus $80,000 a year. So what you're going to do is that you're going to go and you're going to find the area over here with a higher paying job and say, for example, the higher paying job, they say over here. So you go down probably about one, two, three, four blocks, and you're going to see there that they're going to have a range between a hundred thousand and 149,000 or for 149,999. And then you're going to take the other spouse who makes $80,000 a year, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns over from the, from the left. And you're going to see where those two merge, and you're going to see a number there that says $12,920. Okay, that's going to be a very important number for you to use. Because if you go back to the... Um, if you go back to uh, page three, they're basically going to say, put that in, put that number into box into line one, and then you're going to skip to line three. It'll say, enter in the number of pay periods that you have for your highest paying job. So if you get paid monthly, you're going to put in 12. If you get paid, um, if you get paid uh, semi monthly, you're going to put in 24. If you put it, get paid bi-weekly, you're going to put in 26. And if you get paid weekly, you're going to put in 52. And you're going to divide that number, box th line three by line one. And so, I'm sorry, line one by line three. And so what you're going to want to do is that you'll, you'll figure what that number is. And then whatever that number is, you're going to go back to step 4C. 
and you're going to put that number on 4C. And you can see down below where we have line step four, um, box C. Uh, and that's going to have some extra withholding that you can put in there. You want to make sure you do that. Now, if you have three or more jobs, you need to make sure that you're following those different steps. Um, and typically what will end up happening with three or more jobs is basically, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of clients who have this. Um, but what ends up happening is they're going to have you go through certain steps in order to get this done. I'm not going to go into that because the three or more is, is actually a very rare in our firm. But when you're saying three or more, they're, what they're talking about is three or more concurrently. They're not talking about three or more. So like, for example, say you have a, a you know, like my wife, um, you know, she, she, she has a job change. Just take that as an example. So she goes through a job change. She drops one job, picks up another job. In, a set, in essence, she actually has uh, totally between her on her one job throughout the entire year. Because you drop one job and went to the other. Now, and, and look, I think going nitpicky about the fact is, you know, like, and you see this a lot with military people. They get out of the military and they have terminal leave of 90 days and they start their other job within that 90-day period. You still only want to count yourself as having one job. Okay, so you want to make sure that that's the case. Three jobs is going to be, say, say for example, you have, um, you have a, a one spouse who works full-time and then you have another spouse who works two jobs that are part-time. We don't have that in our firm very much. Um, I'm happy to walk that through with you if you want to do that, because if I end up doing that, this video is going to go way long. All right, so now let's go to step three. Step three basically says, if your income will be $200,000 or less, or if it's $400,000 or less and you're married filing joint, you need to take into account these factors. If you have a child that's under the age of 17, when I say under the age of 17, it means zero to 16. If they turn 17 during the tax year that you have in question, they don't qualify for this line. Okay, that's a very important part because one one question that they say is, you know, when you know uh, when does the 17 kick in? If any time, you know, like we're shooting this video in 2020. If any time during the 2020 year your child turns 17, when they file when they file their tax returns. For 20, in 2021 for 2020, they're not going to get the $2,000 tax credit. They're going to get the $500 tax credit. That's the biggest problem that we have with this form. Oftentimes in the past, many people kind of do this whole set it and forget it thing. So what they, what they do is that, you know, they set it. You, you, you'll fill this form out when they're 13 years old and you'll completely forget about it. And then five years later, when you file tax returns and the child goes from 16 to 17, you all of a sudden move from a situation, you get a refund to, a, to a, owing taxes. And the first thing you're saying is why? Well, your kid turned 17, uh, and, and that's why you kind of have to focus on that, all right? So you're going to multiply, for, for step three, that first line, you're going to multiply the number of qualifying children under the age of 17. So if you have three of them, you take three, multiply it by 2,000 to a total of 6,000, and that's, what, that's the number that you're going to uh, put into that box. You're going to put the dollar amount in that box, not the actual number of, of, of children. If you have any people who are qualifying children over the age of 16, but under the age of 24, and, you know, but if, if you have a child who's, you know, 17 or 18, they automatically qualify. If they're 19 to 24, they have to be in college. They have to be enrolled as a full-time student in order to qualify for this. But if you have a ch child who fits into that, qual that, that criteria, multiply that number of children by 500 and put it on that second line. Okay, you want to put it on that second line. You're going to total up the ones that you put on line one and line two, and you're going to put that into box three. All right. Now, going to step four, they're going to say here that they've got other income not from jobs. So, for example, if you have, um, you know, if you want tax withheld from other income you expect this year that won't have withholding, enter the amount of other ta of other income here. This may include interest, dividends, and rental income and retirement income. My recommendation is before you do this, you talk to us. We want to make sure that, that this that this applies to you because one of the problems that we have had in the past, there's some people who get, you know, they say for example they've got a Roth IRA distribution. Roth IRAs are not taxable. But they get concerned about it. They look at this. They read it. They say, well, it's, re it's retirement income, so I must put it in. No, it's not taxable. You don't need to put that in there. If you've got veterans benefits, 
that doesn't get put into here because it's not taxable. It's not going to, it's not going to have an effect on that. Social security could be taxable depending on how much you get and how much, how much other income you have. So those are very important questions that you need to be working with a tax professional in order to make sure that you get that stuff taken care of. And again, if you're one of my clients, reach out to me. If you're not one of my clients and want to become a client, reach out to me. And if you are, um, but if you're a, a, if you're working with another CPA, EA or tax attorney, feel free to reach out to them to make sure that you get the, uh, the information that you need. The so line B I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to put this out right here. Unless you're a person who's used to having itemized deductions of $50,000 or more, use the standard deduction. You just want to use the standard deduction. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, that'll withhold too much for my paycheck. Yeah, I get it. But here's the problem. There's too many times where people tend to do this set it and forget it regime. And then what ends up happening is that their, their, their itemized deduction changes radically. They sell a house and move into a rental. Or they, um, or, or they decide to pay off their home loan, or they're used to doing $20,000 of charitable deductions and all of a sudden they have a bad year and they can't do that anymore and they haven't withheld sufficiently, my recommendation is that you go ahead and set this for the standard deduction. That way, if you have a changing landscape, you don't have to worry about it. Now, like I said, if you're used to having $50,000 or more in itemized deductions, and I do have some clients that have that, um, if that happens, reach out to us. We'll tell you what number you should be putting into there. But my recommendation is you, you, the, the best thing for you to do to save you of heartache and stress when you actually end up owing money. In line B, you don't want to put anything in there because what it does is that it says, if you expect to claim deductions other than the standard deduction and want to reduce your withholding, use deductions worksheet on page three and enter result here. I don't recommend doing that. I, I, just, I, I, I just see too much you know, if people were reviewing the W-4s on an annual basis, like I usually do, um, fine. Uh, you, you know, you could, you could put a different number in there, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend against doing that. Um, unless you are managing this on a frequent basis. And let's be honest, who wants to be doing this process every single year? You shouldn't have to. Okay. So, so, so that's kind of the thing that they do. And again, 4C is where you're going to put any additional tax you want withheld in each period. Again, we already went ahead and we calculated that out for you. And then, um, and then that gets kind of taken care of. Now, here's the thing. That's all you do. You're not going to add anything. You're not going to figure anything out after that. You're going to leave those numbers just as they are. Okay. Some people, I, I've had some people who I've walked them through a W-4. And the first thing that they're saying is, I want to know how much additional tax is going to be calculated. And the answer is, it's got to be fed through the payroll system in order to figure that out. And they're going to do that. Okay. That's, that's their job. If you have any questions about how much withholding is going to get done, hand your W4 over to your payroll person and say, I need to know how much you're going to take out extra per week uh, or per pay period in order for me to uh, do my financial planning correctly. They'll be happy to help you out. But again, it's, it's going to be something that they have to figure out. It's not going to be figured out on this form. And you want to make sure that you are, you're not running into any issues with that. You do need to do a signature and a date. And here's part of the, you know, here's the thing. When people sign an IRS tax document, they get nervous because they sign something and it turns out, turns out there's a small mistake. The first thing they think of is that you're going to be, you know, hauled off to jail and you're going to be making big rocks into little rocks. That's not the case. Okay. This one, you're going to fill out to the best of your ability using the video techniques that I've given you in this video. Um, you'll be fine. Okay. This actually... The W-4 actually is, is more to protect the employer. In other words, if they don't withhold you correctly, the first thing the IRS is going to do is they're going to march into their office. They're going to say, give me their W-4. And they're going to produce the W-4. And if they don't withhold correctly per what you put on this document, the employer is liable for your problems. Okay? So this actually is going to be kind of to, to protect that employer. And so that's why it's important that you get this thing done. But here's the thing. If you don't fill this thing out... Then what ends up happening is the employer is going to do max withholding. Okay, that's what they're required to do under the law. Or if you fill this out incorrectly, they're not going to do things correctly. But here's the thing. This is their get out of jail free card. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, look, this is the W-4 that you gave me. This is what you told me to do. I did exactly what you told me to do. And these are the results. Not my, not my fault. That's why if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, again, I'm not trying to turn this into a sales pitch, but I, I just want you to make sure that you are working with a tax professional. And again, if you're one of my clients, you should be doing this. 
with me. And if you're not one of my clients and you want to be a client, feel free to reach out. But if you have your own CPA, EA or tax attorney, and you're trying to figure this out and trying to figure out what's going on here, you definitely want to reach out to them and make sure that this is being done correctly. Okay. And that's going to save you a lot of heartache. All right. So that's all I got to say for this video. It went real long. I, I, I really apologize about that, but I think with a tutorial version of this film, I think, I think it's got, you had to kind of go long. Um, again, we're very, very happy. Uh, to, you know, we're shooting videos again on the off season, <laughs> which I, you know, I'm, after this last tax season, I'm very happy to be in the off season. Um, but if you want to reach out to me, like I said, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me at our website at www.betasolutioncpa.com. Again, that's www.betasolutioncpa.com. Um, if you, uh, if you, you know, we would actually appreciate if you're watching this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. And then um, if you really like this video page and you want to get more updates from us about various videos we're going to be doing, because we've got other topics that we've got to talk about. They're sitting, actually sitting on the desk right in front of this camera um, where we're going to be talking about various things. If you want to, if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and hit, hit subscribe, and then we'll, um, we'll make sure that you get all those updates. And again, thank you very much for watching.